Today's the Beis Nissan, Shnas Many people planned on coming to Rostov to spend this special holy day together with the local Jewish community, to Farbrain, to visit the Rebbe's house. I thought I'd take a few minutes to show you where the Rebbe lived, to show you the Rebbe's house, to give you a tour of the place. And Amir Hashem, we look forward to hosting you and to seeing you very soon once things settle down. So this is the house known as Bratsky Sorak Dva, the, 42, uh, the 42nd house on Bratsky Street. When the Rebbe first moved to Rostov, he moved to an apartment on Pushkinskaya, which if you look at this street, you go all the way to the end of the street, it's Pushkinskaya. That was the first apartment the Rebbe rented. When they first came, they went to a hotel for several days, and then they moved to the first apartment. There's a story how the owner of the apartment wasn't so fond of Chassidim coming, to say the least. So it was a very difficult time for the Rebbe Rashab. They moved into a second apartment, and then eventually they bought this building. And after half a year of renovations of this building, they moved in in 1918, Tishrei of 1918. What's special, if you notice, there's a very big gate to this house, something that most of the houses around here don't have. If you look at the houses across the street, they don't have these big gates. Why does this have a big gate? This was considered a house of the rich people, the wealthy, as carriages and horses were able to come in here. And it was a special house that was really something the Rebbe Rashab needed, and I'll explain why. You'll notice there's a big uh, courtyard with walls outside. And it's something that's very special because um, moving in that time, think about this, 1918. You're talking about the time of the revolution, the time of great uncertainty here. It was very difficult. The Rebbe Rashab wanted to build a mikvah. And to build a mikvah, you need to have a house that you're able to have the oitzer, you're able to have the water coming down without anyone seeing. So that's why this uh, house is unique. If you look around, there's a wall around the house and uh, there's no problems with neighbors or anything else. So they bought this house. It was considered a special house, a big house. You can actually see right down the wall, there's a, uh, a fence that used to be the gate, the entranceway to this house. And uh, we assume that this is what was here in 1916, 1915, 1918, 1920, when the Rebbe Rashab lived here. So uh, to look at this house, you have two parts of the house. You have this part of the house here, which is where the Rebbe Rashab, the Friedrich Rebbe lived, in this part of the house, the Echidus room, the Farbrengen room, the Beis Medrash. Then you have this part of the house, which is where Rabbi Lambda, the Chsidim, the secretaries lived in this part of the house. So when the house was bought back by Tzach, um, they knew that there was a mikveh here somewhere, but don't know where the mikveh was. So um, the chassidim that were here as, ch as children back in the day, they said they remember that the mikveh was under the kitchen. But how do you know where the kitchen is? How could you figure out? It's, it's, the house was built in 1870, right? So in 1920, the kitchen was somewhere. How do you know where the kitchen is today? Uh, to be able to look under there to see if the mikveh was there. So they went, they looked in archival documents in the city archive, and they saw that the kitchen used to be right there. So if the kitchen was theirs, then it has to be under somewhere in the basement. And they went down into the basement, and that's where they discovered the famous first Lubavitch mikvah in the world, the mikvah that was built according to the instructions of the Rebbe Rashab, the Bor al Bor mikvah. You can see here, actually, uh, where the water comes. The water comes down from there, and it comes in these uh, pipes here, that are the original pipes, and it goes in here, and that's how it went down into the mikvah. If you see here, these stones, right here in this uh, little cage, they're the stones that were from the mikvah. When they, when they found the mikvah, some stones broke, they wanted to keep them, so they put them there aside. Um, we'll go take a look at the mikvah. The mikvah's right here. It was discovered by the shliach in Rostov, Rabbi Eliashev Kaplon together um, with the, oh. this one here. Hello? Okay, so uh, this is the mikvah right here. So they came into this room and this was a basement. There was nothing here dirt on the ground. They started, you know, moving what was on the floor and they uncovered the first step right here. This is the first step. They uncovered the first step, the second step, the third step, and they realized this was the mikvah. The most amazing thing that was found here was that when they dug it all up, 
they found that the butter, hatachta, the water, the rainwater, if you look in the corner of the mikvah, that was covered with a stone, and there was still water in there when they found this. So imagine the mikvah was sitting here empty for 70 years, and then they find right in there that there's still water from the times of uh, the Friedrich Rebbe. This mikvah was used by the Rebbe Rashab, the mikvah was used by the Friedrich Rebbe, and the mikvah was used by the Rebbe that came here in the times that the Friedrich Rebbe was here. So it's an amazing source to have such a mikvah here, and, uh, and it's uh, historic, the first Lodavish mikvah. Okay. So, looking at this house, um, we'll take a look now. Rabbi Mendel Morozov came here to visit, and when he came here to visit, it was interesting. I was told that he, he entered from the main gate and he saw people walking in to the side door. This side door is the door where the Rebbe Rashad and the Friedrich Rebbe lived. So when Mendel Marazor, Mendel Marazor came in, he saw that, he was taken aback. He was saying, how could you, it's, it's the Rebbe Rashad's house. It's a Friedrich, no one goes in there. He remembers as a child, this was off balance. And this is the place right here. This is the, this is the personal living quarters, the Echidus room of the Rebbe Rashad. Let's take a look. You have here. Здравствуйте, Лиза. Здравствуйте. Живи здоровы. Привет. Привет. Просто снимаю вот живой. Сейчас вот Он снимает So here is the. Uh, this is where the Friedrich Rebbe lived down here. Obviously, this is renovated, so there's not much to see here today. Uh, when there was the yeshiva here, this was the dining room. We're going to come back here soon. Um, this is just what I do, Jimmy Rupi. So, the Rebbe Rashab, the Achilles room, and the room where the Rebbe Rashab lived in, the Rebbe is right up here. I'm going to take it right now. Right here. Right here. This is the room where the Rebbe Rashab lived, where the Rebbe lived, their personal quarters, two rooms. <laughs> These two rooms were the Rebbe Rashab's and the Rebbe personal quarters. And if you heard the story when the Rebbe Rashab was nostalgic, he has to be taken to the yeah. Zal. The Zal was the Echidus room, which was, which was basically to be taken from here into this room, the Echidus room. Was asked to be taken into this room. This is the Yechidus room. This is, uh, you can actually take a look here at the entrance. There's uh, some nails, original nails that were here when they found the house right here and right there from the times of uh, the Rebbe Rashad. So the Rebbe Rashad had one picture taken of him when he uh, was planning, he needed to get a visa, they were planning he had to go to Georgia. And the picture of the Rebbe Rashad is with this uh, wallpaper in the background. So this is the original wallpaper from the time of the Rebbe Rashad. You can also look part of the ceiling here. That was the original ceiling in the times of the Rebbe Rashad. The Rebbe Rashad asked to be taken to this room exactly 100 years ago in Beis Nissen. The Rebbe Rashad asked to be taken to this room and this is where the Rebbe Rashad said, Ich himmel that uh, I'm going to heaven and I'm leaving you the chsavim. And uh, this is the message that we live with, a message that's important to us, that we connect to the Rebbe, to the Nasya Rebbe, to the chsavim, to learning the Rebbe's sikhs, the Rebbe's maimorim, the Rebbe's uh, letters. That's a lesson to each and every one of us. So this is the historic room of uh, It was a big room, people were coming from one side, they go out the other side. This is the room that was known as the Farbrengen room. So this room that the Rebbe Rashab and the Friedrich Rebbe, they'd have Farbrengen. So there's also the little uh, base medrash you can actually see here. So that the Rebbe Rashab used to really sit right over here. The Rebbe Rashab would sit here. And this is where everything took, uh, took place in this small little room. And there was a passageway between this room to the other 
side of the house, which is where the chassidim lived. So you go through from this room. To this room. And this is where uh, this is where the chassidim lived. And the story of how the Rebbe Rashad came to Rostov, it's a very interesting story. Um, the Rebbe Rashad, so there were rumors going around that the German government, that the German army, sorry, were uh, looking to arrest rabbis. They were worried, it was during the First World War, they were worried that people were, uh, the Jewish people would join their enemies. And they figured the way to stop the Jewish people from joining their enemies, joining the Russians, would be by taking their rabbis and holding them hostage. So the decision was taken that it was time for the Rebbe Rashab and, um, and the Friedrich Rebbe to move somewhere and they were offered the option to come here to Rostov. They left Lubavitch after being in Lubavitch for 102 years and uh, they traveled to Rostov. On the way they stopped in a city called Aryol where they thought uh, there was a thought of maybe staying there. Eventually they decided to come here. They arrived, they left if I'm not mistaken, it was Tess Zion if I'm not mistaken, uh, Cheshwin. And they came there 10 days later, nine days later to Rostov. When they arrived in Rostov, the Jews of Rostov met them in the Vagzal, in the train station. And uh, there were actually uh, an interesting story that there were um, kids from Rostov that were learning in Lubavitch. Rostov kids that were kids of Cantonist soldiers, because Rostov is famous as the Cantonist show, the show that was built by Cantonistin. And when they needed to find a place for their kids to learn, to get a Yiddish education, they uh, decided, they looked around at all the issues and decided to send them to Lubavitch. So when the local community heard that the Rebbe is coming to Rostov, they didn't know who the Rebbe was. They thought there was a teacher of their kids who was coming to Rostov. So when the Rebbe came to Rostov and he was met by some of these people and they thought, why, why did the Rebbe come without, the, without our kids? And then they realized, they learned what, what a Rebbe was and what a tremendous bracha Rostov has that the Rebbe Rashab moved here. Originally, the idea was to move here temporarily, to move here for a short period of time. Eventually, it became clear that going back wasn't an option. So the Rebbe, that's when the Rebbe decided that they had to buy this house. They bought it. And it was actually a very sad story because they bought it at a time that things were very difficult. And uh, shortly after they bought it, parts of the house was already taken over by the communists so that they should, uh, they, they put different families here. So by the Stalkus of the Rebbe Rashab, you already had different families, non-Jewish families, living in this house that was bought by the Rebbe Rashab. It's a tremendous schos to be able to be here on Beis Nissen. I want to tell you, I, uh, I, uh, last, last year on, on, on Lag Boimer, I, uh, I heard about uh, the, the, that it was important for the Rebbe Rashab. The Rebbe Rashab used to dedicate the kindling of the Lag Boimer fire in Hebron. So when I read that, I thought it was a nice idea to do Lag Boimer here in Rostov, that it should be in the Rebbe Rashab's Chotzer. So we did hear Lag Boimer. And uh, in the middle of the celebration of the fire, the singing, we came up, we did a minion in the Rebbe Rashab's Chiddush room. And I happened to pick up a sefer of the Rebbe Rashab's uh, Memorium. And in that sefer, I opened it and happened to open, it was Tof Reish Ayin Tess, so exactly a hundred years ago then. And it opened to the mimer the Rebbe Rashab said on Lag Boimer. And it hit me, what a, what a tremendous chos to be, be able to learn the Rebbe Rashab's mimer in the house where it was said a hundred years later. Um, I think the message that we could learn from this special day, you know, we planned many things for business and we thought that we'd all be meeting here and we'd do something special that would give the Rebbe Nachas, that would give COVID to the Rebbe Rashab, something, you know, as, as Tmimim that learned in the Rebbe Rashab's uh, yeshiva, and we learned the Rebbe Rashab's chassidus, and you know, many people have never made it here. I thought it would be something very special. It turns out that uh, the Ebesh had different plans, and uh, we're now finding ourselves in our houses, in online schools. You know, the whole world now knows what an online school is, uh, not just uh, shluchim living out in the outposts of the world. I think the message that we could learn is that uh, the world is changing, we, uh, we, we have to prepare ourselves, we have to remember what the Rebbe told us, that uh, to do everything in your hands, in your power, to bring Mashiach. And that has to be the message. If someone would have told us uh, a month ago that such a thing would happen, I don't think anyone would have thought it was possible. But we see the world is changing and we have to believe and we have to pray that all those needing Yeshua or Refua should get it and it should come by means of Mashiach coming, the whole world. It was 25 years ago, 30 years ago, 35 years ago when, when the Rebbe would speak, when we spoke about 
uh, Mashiach based on the Rebbe said, everyone thought we were crazy. Today the whole world's talking about Mashiach. They're ready to hear it, and we have to tell it to them, and we have to believe in it ourselves. And if we have problems believing it, we have to learn it, learn the Sikhs of the Rebbe. And uh, Yirot said that we should be Zeche, that even before Pesach, we should, uh, we should uh, merit the coming of Mashiach, and we should go be- together to Eretz Yisrael with the coming of Mashiach.